Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and this one is part two of the Colours Clearance series that I'm doing. So the first part, if you haven't seen that, if you click the pop out banner at the top, that will take you to that video. That one was about clearing the yellow, green and brown. All the various positions we find ourselves in when we're trying to clear the yellow, green and brown. That will really help you with that. This video is going to focus on the brown to blue, another key shot. This is almost one of probably the most important shot when you're clearing the colours. If you get this one right, then the rest should hopefully follow. So, I think first of all it's best to put yourself in a good position. So, I've placed myself here. If I get the blue and green out a second here, you see if the green was on the spot and the blue is next to it, you see where I've put the white there just a little bit further down. So that should give you some idea there of just trying to give you a shot of where that white is. So I've made a little mark so I can play this shot consistently. Now, there's two ways from here I could get onto that blue. One is that I could screw down directly. So let's have a look at that. Can you see on that graphic the way if I screw directly down a straight line and try and get on that blue, I've got a very small area for landing nicely on that blue. You can see that I can, if I under hit it, I'm in that little red zone, I'm not landing good. If I over hit it, I've gone too far. So I've got a very small little window for landing very good. Now the better shot is to use the side cushion. If you use the side cushion, can you see the way I'm coming in towards the blue and I leave a shot for a long time? Now, so I've set myself up and I make a little mark. I always tell people to do that, so I've made it. You can only see it faintly there, but I've made a faint little mark where the white's going to go. And first of all, I think the good idea to do is find out where this white is going if we just hit it natural ball. So by natural ball, you don't want to go middle because you might make the white skid slightly. So let's go just a bit above centre and just pop the brown. So I pop the brown, see where the white's going to hit on the cushion? So quite high up over here, it's hit on the cushion. And then obviously that is not leaving us a very good shot at all on the blue. So it's, you know, it's a long way from that blue there. So let's get this brown out again and have a look. So we want to try now to stun the white so that we send it wide over here, comes off this cushion and then down towards the blue. So the problem is with that are when you play a stun shot, you've got the height on the white that will alter how much stun you get. And you've also got the power that you play the shot will also alter how much stun you get. So you're trying to get those two things right when you play a stun shot. So I'm going to pick here, minus one on the white. So from the centre, minus one, just go one tip down. And let's play this shot. And I'm going to try and hit these a little bit harder for you each time to show you what I mean. So let's play this first one. I'm going from this mark, minus one. Let's play this shot. Okay, so that's, that's good. We'd be happy with that angle there on the blue. So if we come around and look at that, it's a nice little angle. We can get to the, the pink there. Right, let's play that same shot again. I'm going to hit the shot softer, so I'm not going to hit it as hard. So, same shot, just minus one, not as hard. Right, you see the way the white has hit much higher up the cushion here? And if we come round and look, we can see that we haven't left a very good shot on the blue. Much too high, really, for comfort. Now, the reason for that was because we used less power that time. So I was hitting the same point on the white, but because I didn't hit it as hard, I didn't make the white spin backwards as much. So when you hit below centre on the white, you're making the white start to spin backwards a little bit. And that's what gives us that stun effect. Now, the first one was good because I hit it hard enough to make it stun enough. The second one was too soft and I made it and, and all the spin had gone. It had run out by the time the white got to the brown. There was no spin left on the white and it didn't stun. So let's do that again and let's hit it very hard. So we'll do that. Right. Now you can see it's gone really wide. It's gone actually past this middle pocket and down the table. All of those shots were played at the same point on the white. It was just the power was different on each one of those shots. So you have to experiment there with what power you need to hit it so you get the perfect line. Because depending on the point on the white and how hard you hit it, you'll hit different points on that side cushion each time. So you want to experiment with getting the right point and the right power. Now to quickly recap there, what you want to do is change one of those things one at a time. So what I do is I pick, right, I'm going to hit the next 10 shots at minus one on the white, and that's what I'm doing for the next 10 shots, and I'm not changing. The only thing I'm going to try and change is power. And even power at first when you're learning, 
just try and hit them all at medium pace and see how well you can get the white to land nicely on the blue. So you just want to, I'm doing medium power, minus one, and I'm just trying to get it to stun off the cushion, down like that, and nicely on the blue. Now obviously, I've practiced that shot a lot, so I know how hard I need to hit it to get the white to bounce off and leave a nice shot on the blue. The more you practice it, the more you'll hit them at the correct speed and get the perfect timing. That's what we talk about when we talk about that timing on a shot, hitting it at just the right height, just the right speed, to get the white exactly where we want on the blue. Let's have a look at some of the other common places you might find yourself on this brown. Right, so have a look at this position. So I've landed closer to the side cushion. Again, this will be very common when you're learning your colours clearances. Now, we've got the other shot available to us again. We could try and dig into the white like that and play off this side cushion. There's nothing wrong with that, but the queuing is more difficult now because we're very close to the side cushion. So whenever I've got these difficult shots, I always ask myself the question, can I just play this shot, plain ball, so just a little bit above centre, just naturally where the white's running and leave a shot on the blue? And the answer to that in this case is actually yes, I can. It's very close to being able to just be a natural ball shot. So the white's going to hit the brown, come off the side cushion here, and then it can come back over here if I just hit it a bit harder. So if I played it slowly, too high on the blue, but if I let it come back over this way, I'm going to leave a nice shot on the blue. Now, one last thing about that. Depending on where the white is hitting on this cushion determines where the white's going to then come along this line back towards the blue over here. Now, if I think it's going to come a little bit high and leave me a bit tricky on this blue, you know, a bit, a bit too high, I might play a tracer left-hand side and let the white come back over here like that. Okay, so I'm going to play this a little bit of left-hand side, hit it nice and positively, keep nice and still, let the white come back across, and you can see that, yeah, the white's come nicely back across, I've left a nice shot on the blue, and I can just pop this blue now and roll through into this area for the pink. So that was a, a nice little recovery shot, almost using basically there, just the natural angle that the white was taking. Now, I'm not saying at first at all you have to experiment with using that side. You can just play your, your plain ball shots. But it's a good thing when you set yourself up these key positions, you'll get ahead of the people around you. If you're the player that's practicing these, setting yourself up in some of these little awkward positions and learning where the white ball is actually going when we use the natural angles and when we maybe just try and tweak it just a little bit with that side. Let's have a look at another common angle that we'll leave ourselves when we want to go brown to blue. Right, this brown here, very common, haven't quite come far enough, so all of a sudden I need to use the bulk cushion and I've got to try and get to this blue now. So this will be very common, you land here quite often. Let's just play this top spin to go up and down the table, see what happens. So I'm trying not to use much left hand side or anything here, so just plain ball, let it pop and then come down. And that again, that's not too bad. The only danger we have here is going along this line, you're asking yourself to land good. You've got a very small window for the white to be in perfect position. If you can play off two cushions, always try and come into the line of the blue because that's leaving yourself in a better position. Right, so let's have a look at this shot again. If I play this same shot, left-hand side now, again, got to follow through nicely, but a left-hand side. You see that time I've come round off two cushions and this time I'd got much more margin once it comes off this cushion to land good. Absolutely delighted with that again. I can just roll this blue through. It's got a tiny, tiny angle so I can leave a nice straight pink, roll through and get onto the black. Let's have a look at the last way we could potentially play that shot. So here we are on this same angle again, and I might even play this next shot if I'm even a bit thinner like this. So this shot is where we try and screw round this corner pocket. So screw round the corner of the yellow pocket, back out and leave the white over here for the blue. Now, of course, this shot, if you get too much screw on the white, you will actually screw the white too much and I could actually hit this side cushion. Not enough screw and I'll come more into the centre of the table. So, again, it's all about learning the speed and the amount of stun and screw that you need. But this is a great shot to try and practice and get in your locker again. So, round the corner like that. Bringing the white round. Trying to leave myself on that blue. And you can see absolutely over the moon there again with that position on the blue. I can roll through, I can even use the cushion here to get a bit closer to the pink. So, some common shots again there that you might find yourself when you're going brown to blue. Learn your key shot first, that's the most important one. 
and then you can tag on the other shots as well and that will really help you to start clearing the colours with more regularity. So as always everybody, I really hope you found this video useful. As always, if you did, please remember to give the video a like. If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I make regular uploads with exhibition shots, tutorial videos like this, lots of fun stuff, so please consider giving the channel a subscribe. For anyone who's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, I'm working with players on this very table all the time, helping them to improve their game. So if you'd like to contact me, all my details are in the description box below. You can visit my website at www.bartonsnooker.co.uk. Stay tuned for next week's video, which is going to be all about the blue, pink and black when clearing the colours. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Cheers.